So, hello everyone. My name is Katya. I am working as a nutritionist and a health coach with people. So this talk is going to be about how to be your own health professional. So you would know how to reach your optimum health and maintain it and what are the markers are which will keep you on track. But we will have it as an interaction. So when I ask you a question, you please don't be shy to answer out loud what you think. And I mean, it doesn't have to be right, just what you feel at the moment. So how many people notice um, that they don't have hunger on this uh, raw lifestyle? Like it's to the people who already kind of transitioned. Anyone feel like they don't feel hunger in the morning anymore, like they used to be? Yeah, how many people? Yes, okay. Uh -huh. And uh, who, used, who used to feel very bad in the morning if they don't eat? Like anyone experienced it in the past? Like you feel a bit sick? Yeah, okay. Anyone still feeling it in the morning? If you don't eat, you feel like you really want to eat because it's uncomfortable and bad. No? You, okay. Yeah, okay. And then anyone ever experienced morning sickness, especially like women who had child, so like babies, whilst pregnant, morning sickness when you can't eat in the morning? Yeah. What, uh, in which months it occurred? First three months. First three months. Yeah. So uh, can you describe the symptoms? What did you feel? Uh, quite vomiting and couldn't eat. Just couldn't eat? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. And so what would you do? Would you eat or you would drink something or what would you do? Just maybe drink something. But... Like tea or something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And yeah, the symptoms are um, which normally come in the morning if you don't eat and you have quite a toxic body. It's uh, the symptoms. So it's nausea, vomiting. What else? What else would come? Like maybe headache. Anyone tried to fast on on his own? No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, what are the symptoms? Headache. Maybe a lack of appetite, but sometimes uh, for some people desire to eat so they can stop it, so it it doesn't continue. And it could be fatigue, like you feel no energy, like weak. And then it could be a bad mood, especially for men. It's for men who eat lots of meat, it's very typical. When they're hungry, they get angry, like aggravated. No? Anyone experienced it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Anyone uh, drinks alcohol here? Or used to drink a lot? Yeah. So in the morning, how do you feel in the morning after drinking? Not so good. Not so good? Okay, can you describe the symptoms, what it is? Um, well, the bed has stopped spinning. Um, <laughs> headache. Headache. Uh, could be vomiting on the toilet bowl. Nausea, yeah. Vomiting the toilet bowl. Uh -huh. So, uh, how do you feel about eating? Not, 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 not on my agenda. No, not in your case, not okay. Stay, not stay down. Anyone like to eat when they was hungover? Yeah, yeah me too. I, I used to have like a huge and breakfast <laughs> with eggs, eggs and then yes. it will make it go away. Oh, yeah, you yeah. feel better. Yes, okay. <laughs> yeah, you can also feel like sometimes bad mood, but this is if you don't eat and you feel fatigued. And uh, you know what alcoholics do, and, and I also did several times in my life, to make the symptoms go away, drink you drink some more, yeah. yeah, and it goes away. <laughs> Why do you think it's so? Stay dry. Why do you think uh, the symptoms go away, and what are the symptoms? Because you stop detoxing. Yeah. yeah, so your body trying to clean itself from the poisons you put last night. And you can feel that it's coming out because your breath smells of alcohol, your skin smells of alcohol, your sweat smells of alcohol. It's trying to excrete it in every possible way. And some people have diarrhea in the morning because this is one of the ways to excrete it. And so this, uh, the symptoms are the same as when you have this uh, morning sickness when you're pregnant. 
and they are the same if you start to fast without any proper preparation. If just normal person on normal diet suddenly start to fast and they feel these symptoms, just they can vary from um, the strength of the symptoms and they can come not straight away but maybe on a second day. And, uh, and most of people because of it, they can't fast. They say, oh no, 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 not for me. Like my body doesn't tolerate it. No, it's everyone's body when they are have a lot of cleaning to do and if you not assist them, they don't tolerate it very well. It feels uncomfortable because your body releases toxins in your blood and as when you hang over, you can feel it. It doesn't feel nice. Your liver uh, has to filter all this blood and then excrete all the things. Uh, and it doesn't feel nice. And uh, it's not supposed to be. It's a cleaning process. So what we are cleaning from? Like why, why is it happening pretty much for every person every morning if their body is dirty enough? Why is it so? How do you think? Like can't your body just not do it or do it the way that it doesn't bother you? Any ideas? Why is it happening like this? Why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's happening because we put in our body's fins which not belong there but also we live in a polluted environment. So we breathe things which not belong to the body. So like uh, exhaust fumes or like some kind of uh, chemicals, all sorts of stuff, like all the cleaning products, you can smell them, you don't want to drink them and that means it's harmful and some pieces of it still come in and get absorbed and your body is very strongly rejected and it wants to get it out. And if, uh, you can have this process going on as much as possible, then maybe at some point your body will run out of amount of toxins and it's not gonna feel so uncomfortable. That's, that's at least what happens to people when they turn to a raw diet, they reduce amount of toxins which coming in. This is why in the morning you don't feel that hungry anymore because these symptoms become much less. They are not as uncomfortable. Cleaning process is still happening, but just at the comfortable uh, level. So it doesn't bother you as much. Uh, but if you start to fast, uh, you still might experience some of the symptoms if you have some cleaning to do. So what our bodies are cleaning from, how do you think, like what kind of things? You can also read it or you can come up from your own understanding. What kind of things we are cleaning from? Apart from, okay, pollution, yes, we understand. But what else is in your body? So it's a metabolic waste, your own metabolic waste. Every cell in your body has some kind of a waste, uh, the, the products of its existence. Like we go to toilet, you know, the, the products. So something coming into a cell, and it cannot stay there forever, some things have to be excreted, you know, it's, it can't just, you understand? And uh, so every cell has uh, some things which have to be recycled and uh, excreted and we every day eat something and it has to be excreted. So your body, uh, even in normal circumstances, if you live in a perfect environment where there's no pollution whatsoever, you eat natural foods and you still have to be cleaning. You still have to be excreting your metabolic waste, every cell of your body. So uh, this is the first thing what we need to be cleaning from. <coughs> and this is normal thing, it's natural, and it's supposed to occur every day in every individual. And if it's still happening, then um, your lifespan will be maximized if it's happening. The other things is Toxic, toxins, poisons, carcinogens, medicine, uh, all these things uh, which come in from food, air, pollution, or just, you know, you get exposed to particular situations. Um, water, water, you know, even the natural water could be contaminated with something and your body has to excrete it. If it's like too much calcium, for example, in some water, your body has to excrete it. If it's too much of some other element, your body has to excrete it. 
And uh, if you drink chlorinated water, then definitely there is some things which cannot stay in the body because it doesn't belong there. It, our body has a very um, delicate balance and it wants to keep it that way. Um, and uh, all sorts of things you put on your skin, like all sorts of skin products also get absorbed and then your lymphatic system have to take it and excrete it if it's not natural thing. Um, so uh, all these things and then what else? Anything which comes in excess in our body. So like even excess of simple sugars, even if you eat too much fruit, it will be too much sugar, you'll have to get rid of it. Uh, if you eat too much fat, some fats will have to be excreted because it's too much. Uh, same with anything, too much proteins, too much salt, uh, too much of any compound. So if, I don't know if you ever experimented, I did. If you eat too much onion, then you go to the toilet and your pee smells like onions. <laughs> there is a particular element uh, their nutrient which has to be excreted because it's too much. But, but um, too much can also be stored, not necessarily it's just excreted, right? Uh, if it needs to be stored as a, you know, like if it's like some kind of vitamin which we able to store and your body needs like it. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, uh, the, this is the next story when your body cannot excrete it, then it will store it. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah. Ideally, in ideal situation, whatever is in excess to body needs, it has to be excreted. And uh, um, JC, I think, was mentioning uh, green, green leafy vegetables. Yeah, how this compound called, uh, which has to be excreted if it's too much? The sulfur. Yeah, the sulfur or the, um, the oxalic acid. Al alkaloids. Alkaloids, I think. Alkaloids. Alkaloids is what makes you lose interest in eating like spinach or a specific green if you've had too much of it. Yes, yes, you yes. Have this of not eating it to like it again. Yeah, and, and it's uh, absolutely true. I mean, too much of one thing is not good. Um, then the undigested uh, things like starch, which we can't really digest, has to be excreted, otherwise, it will block. Uh, like get accumulated and block, like uh, it can block some of the cup flowers and uh, uh, some uh, tissues and other whatever, other chemicals, metals, heavy metals have especially tendency to stay in the body and it's hard to excrete them, but if you can, this, this is great. So all these things, and uh, let's look at how exactly your body do it. So, how do you feel in the morning when you're hungover? Like, what would you very like to do? Yes, you don't want to eat, but what would you like to do? Drink. Mm -hmm. Yes, you feel thirsty most of the time. Mm -hmm. And why is it so? Mm -hmm. Because all our cleaning systems work on water. So, if you look at, at birds, for example, their cleaning system works on acid. So, when they um, poop, this uh, white stuff coming out because they use acid to bind with their metabolic waste and excrete it because to base it on water like we do would take too much weight and they can't fly. It's, it's, uh, water is heavy. So they use a little bit of acid to do this. That's this how they evolved. But we evolved to use water for it. And all our systems uh, which uh, um, eliminating everything which has to be eliminated, they work on the water. So what kind of systems it is? Uh, one of the main system eliminating system is digestive tract, colon. So this is the main thing. If something comes into your body which don't belong there, what, what do you feel? Like it could be diarrhea. Yes. Anyone had malaria here? <laughs> No. Okay, so people who had malaria, they know that very often you feel diarrhea well, like, is the first symptom because your body says, okay, we like have a serious problem here, we don't have time for digestion, just get rid of everything, let's clean as much as possible so we can fight. And uh, anyone 
went to India or Asia and had like a severe diarrhea ever? Yeah, a common experience for Westerners. You, you buy some street food, there is some unusual bacteria coming and then you just go to the toilet for several hours. Yeah, uh, so uh, your body, yeah, <laughs> depends. Your body use colon, colon is the important thing. And um, also your lymphatic system dumps some of uh, its, uh, whatever it's collected into a colon, so it can be excreted quickly out of the body. So the other, uh, and, and uh, to make things moving in digestive tract, you have to have water, enough water content in your food and uh, just drinking. If it's not enough, it's gonna get what constipated. It's gonna get very slow and illuminate things very slowly. This is why high water content, this is why all these foods full of water. Uh, try to eat cereals like for several days and not eat, you, you'll see what's gonna happen. Uh, I mean, not drink, and you'll see like you're gonna get constipated. <laughs> That's what happens. And uh, the other system is lymphatic system. Uh, Eliminating. So, what do you know about lymphatic system? Anyone knows anything much? Uh, what pumps lymphatic system? What makes it move around? Movement, Movement exactly. So, um, uh, cardiovascular system. So, the blood system has uh, our heart and heart pumping it all the time. Lymphatic system doesn't have anything like this, and lymphatic system uh, has two or three times more flu fluid in it than the blood system. So it's quite a bit of fluid. And if you dehydrate it, if you don't have enough water coming in into your system, then the lymphatic system cannot work properly. Also, if you just sit on a chair or lie down for the whole day, also you can guess that the lymphatic system is not going to be moving. It's going to be very, very super slow moving. So to start, Lymphatic movement, you have to do some kind of vigorous exercise. Lower body exercise is very good because it's the biggest muscles are here and there. And uh, stretching is good because also it's a uh, start lymph movement. Uh, so lymphatic system is, is pretty important. And how we excrete stuff, uh, one of the main things through urine and kidneys, that's when it comes to liquids, uh, and also uh, through skin, sweat, breath, um, this is happening especially when this bit doesn't work as good. Then blood, uh, whatever is uh, in your blood, liver has to filter. This is why you feel so not so good in the morning when you hang over. Uh, you have to filter all these toxins which you consumed yesterday, and your liver, if it doesn't work as good, um, it will not filter. And then uh, your body can alter uh, the level of toxins. It will not put so much toxins into your blood if your liver is weak. It will just store them elsewhere. So at some point in Uganda, when we were drinking every day, I stopped to have hangover because my liver is weak naturally I was born with liver condition and uh, I stopped to have hangover and I was like oh look at me uh, you know like I drank so much yesterday and I'm fine and this is actually a very um, you know concerning thing and uh, you have to understand that your liver is failing that's what it means and many uh, many uh, alcoholics they don't have hangover anymore and I'm coming from Russia and drinking is very big there so uh, yeah, so blood, what blood is, is also liquid. So it also has to have enough water. And uh, mm, skin, sweat, and breath, it's all based on fluids. So to be dehydrated, this is like the worst thing you can do for your cleaning process. Um, any other bodily fluids when uh, your body cannot eliminate um, amount of toxic, or toxins or metabolic waste in normal ways, then it starts to use all other body fluids. So mucus, uh, anyone find that on a raw diet they don't have mucus spitting out anymore? Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, in the past, how regular it was every day? Yeah, in the nose. In the nose, yes, yeah. every day. So your body produces mucus, use it as a way to eliminate the waste because this is not, it's not enough anymore. The amount which come in is too much. Then for the women, your body even uses uh, blood in like when you have your period, it raises amount of toxins in your blood. This is scientifically proven. There is lots of research about it. And the amount of toxins raised in your blood just before your period, so it can dump as much as possible. And scientists emphasize that because of it, women on average live longer, for 10 years longer than men. Who knows exactly, but this is what they emphasize. And uh, any other bodily fluids your body will use uh, to, to dump it. And then, we come into this cleaning process. So how do you think, uh, how much of the time this cleaning process is supposed to happen in your body? Like what kind of, uh, for one hour a day, two hours a day, three hours a day, what, what is the best, how do you think? Constantly. Constantly, Constantly. exactly, 24 seven, 24 seven. And uh, to understand how much average person actually have this cleaning process on, we need to look into what starts cleaning process and what stops cleaning process. So first thing we figure it out, uh, hydration. If you're properly hydrated, then your body has better chance of eliminating things. So if you're dehydrated, that's not gonna happen. That's just uh, your body wouldn't have enough fluid to move it all. And uh, in this situation, what happens? It getting stored in some of your tissues. Um, okay, uh, next thing, anyone knows what, what else? What else uh, starts cleaning process? Any ideas? Hmm? Sleep. Sleep? Yes, so if you're well rested. Yes, that's correct. And let's look why this so. So the system which is in charge of all other systems in the body it's neurological system. So your nervous system, it is electricity going all over in the nerves, in your body, comes to the brain, your brain is part of neurological system, and it uh, orders all other systems, including um, immune system, including lymphatic system and other systems, all the organs, it orders what to do. If this system doesn't work or if it is not active enough, or it is overactive or aggravated, the cleaning process not gonna be going properly. And uh, the thing is with the people who are very elderly, what happens, the neurological system goes to sleep. It is uh, becoming too slow. Um, and people who are very young, especially when they are kids, the neurological system very active. And uh, one of the uh, things what we can see in people's face is this red cheeks and this shine. This is the, the level of activity of neurological system. When you shine, uh, even like a person could be elderly, but if they do exercise, they jump, they went for hot shower, they come back, they shine, their cheeks are red. This is, means your neurological system is up and running, and this is the stage, this is how you're supposed to keep it. This is how you're supposed to keep it. And the elderly people, what they have, they have a very pale skin, it's hardly any blood coming. Things are moving very slowly in the body, neurological system, nearly asleep. And if you, um, so maybe you experimented with yourself. You can also bring yourself to this state. What do you have to do for this? Not sleep properly? Work a lot in front of computer? Eat in bed. Yeah, eat in bed, stress, not exercise and live in the cold climate. If you do these things, you'll see you'll lose color in your face. You're gonna look like a half dead. And uh, the easiest way to kill yourself, just don't sleep for one week. Next week, you're gonna die. That's 
That's the fact. Because your neurological system not getting rested. Unless you're Tony Wright. Huh? Unless you're Tony Wright, the, the raw vegan that holds the record for not sleeping, which was like 10 days or 11 days. Yeah, well, I mean, it's still, <laughs> uh, still, okay. I mean, you it's less die, than two weeks. You would die soon after. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I wouldn't recommend to try. Yeah, it's, it's very dangerous. No, it's yeah. So, um, to activate neurological system to make sure that a uh, cleaning process is happening, uh, what you can do, one thing which is very significant for neurological system is sleep and ease, relax. So what we do in like here often, like with Wendy meditation, what we do, we just relax, like get rid of all the stress in the body. This is basically just relaxing neurological system. The other thing what you can do to relax it, you can do vigorous exercise and then your body will relax itself automatically after you, after you sit down and you feel relaxed completely. You can go for hot shower and then you relax. You can go to sauna and your body will relax your neurological system automatically to save you from overheating. And uh, this is a very good thing to do. And then um, the other thing which activate neurological system is oxygen. So you know how uh, sportsmen and people who are very sick, they use oxygen uh, therapy, uh, especially cancer patients for recovery. More oxygen, more active neurological system, uh, better, like just your cells get more oxygen. Everything happens quickly, including the cleaning process is happening very quickly when you have a lot of oxygen. This is why doing physical activity in the forest, next to the sea, in some clean place, is very good. You get so much more ex oxygen compared to when you sit in the office. Is Your body will you know, appreciate it very, very much. And the other thing which activates our neurological system, and this is specific to our species, it's uh, fruit sugar. So fruits activate our neurological system very much. And you can see it as soon as you eat some fruit, you feel mentally very, very alert, you feel full of energy, you're ready to go, you're ready to run, ready to rock and roll and do all sorts of physical activity. And uh, this is what um, me and many other people use with people um, who have cancer. So if their neurological system usually is so very slow that fasting is not enough because fasting is slowing it down even more. Uh, ketones, they don't have the same effect on your brain as glucose or fructose. It slows it down. Uh, so you give them a little bit of fruit and then you can see the cleaning process start to happen. So this is the things which activate neurological system. This things which slow it down. Animal products slow it down. Saturated fat slow it down. How do we know it? There is a, a huge body of research uh, in medicine. We use it for um, epileptic kids and uh, curing seizures. And this is like a hundred years old history of using um, fasting and fasting mimicking diet. And fasting mimicking diet is based on uh, keto diet. So it's uh, a lot of saturated fats basically because they slow down neurological system so the seizures stop and uh, it works like kids just uh, you know getting getting off medications and then after a couple of years you can uh, uh, put kids on a normal diet and, and they recover because the neurological system comes down with age so the other thing which slow it down neurotoxins for example, why, like, when you drink alcohol, why you don't, um, why you don't start cleaning straight away? Why? Because your neurological system affected by this toxin. You feel like it, it can't just clean because it's affected. It's intoxicated. Until this intoxication goes down, it cannot start cleaning. So if you keep intoxicate yourself you're not going to be cleaning. This is why in the morning when you hang over, you drink a bit more and then you intoxicate it again and cleaning process completely stop and you get rid of all these symptoms. And what uh, normal people do in the morning, they wake up, they 
Okay, didn't eat for one hour, two hours, and then they start to feel uncomfortable. They eat food, and food stops cleaning process. So they feel great again. They feel like, oh, that's good. That mu it must have been hunger, but it wasn't. And uh, so uh, coming from this, what starts uh, cleaning process is empty digestive tract. Uh, it starts cleaning process, and busy digestive tract stop it. And uh, when it comes to the diet, um, raw diet doesn't slow down neurological system. It doesn't slow down um, everything what's going on in your body in terms of uh, immune response. And cooked foods, they do slow it down, so your cleaning process stops. Uh, when you eat cooked food, what ha happening? Uh, your body produces white blood cells, uh, it's immune response, it goes into your digestive system and reacts on it like it would react on injury or on a virus. And we actually, uh, we did doing some blood tests on our cells and our blood cells, they are lower than for average people. And uh, when I work with cancer patients, when they go through chemotherapy, their white blood cells going through the roof because your body reacts on chemotherapy as a poisoning, as an invasion. So you produce a lot of it. And uh, doctors at some point, they can stop you taking chemotherapy when it goes too much. They say, okay, that's, that's just too much. Let's stop for a moment and wait till they come down and then continue. Okay, what else could be happening um, to stop the cleaning process? Um, cooked diet and busy digestive tract, this is two important ones because why, okay, a normal person in the morning get up, eat food, um, it stays in, the, in your stomach for four or five hours, then what happens, you start to get hungry, you eat again, new food coming, five, four hours, new food, so how many hours a day this is stopped? Like count how many hours. Effectively, it's only at night, maybe your stomach will become empty enough for cleaning process to start. This is why in the morning you wake up and you feel like, you know, maybe you have to eat again to stop it because it doesn't feel good. And uh, this is the reason why people have this hunger in the morning. And I used to have severe hunger, especially if I'm hungover, I would just go and eat big amounts of food so I can stop it, so I can feel good again because I didn't understand where it come from. Okay, uh, the other things which stop it, it's um, lack of sleep, because neurological system cannot recover properly. Then uh, lack of oxygen, so if you have to sit in a um, very low oxygen environment like uh, office, uh, you can't recover properly. And you can see it on a cancer patients, especially because they are people who have to recover. Um, then slow metabolism. This is uh, uh, a very interesting thing where two major players are cold and inactivity. So coming from Siberia, I know very well when you go into a cold, it doesn't even have to be too cold. It has to be below 20 degrees room for a whole day your, all the processes in your body will slow down so significantly that uh, this will stop. And uh, for people, especially what I find different from Russia to England because the um, temperatures in the houses are different, in England it's colder because we save on fuel, um, and in Russia it's central heating, so it's 24 degrees, uh, people in the winter um, in Russia, they don't really feel much difference with uh, summer, but in England they do. Uh, people like accumulate a little bit more fat, they uh, age quicker. This is because cleaning process is not clean, uh, happening properly. So one way to keep your, yourself alive is to be active, make sure every day you break the sweat somehow and keep everything moving. And the other way is insulate your house and make sure it's uh, 24 degrees in it, or higher if you like it. 
Uh, but this thing uh, we use in cancer patients, it's called hypothermia. Uh, when uh, people go to hot saunas for two to four hours a day, every day, and the cancer cells die, and the cleaning process starts very quickly, they sweat, and they regenerate cells, and in a month's time, you can see dramatic difference. So if you recover from anything, uh, doing hypothermia, is one of the best things you can do for yourself. And uh, yeah, you can also do it through physical activity. It is more labor demanding, but it's, it's important. And then overactive or aggravated neurological system. Uh, what happens here? So basically, every time you're stressed, you are aggravating your neurological system. What happens when you stress uh, your your body responses such it narrows the channel, uh, neurological channel, which pumps electricity to your brain. Uh, this happens because it's response, uh, flight, uh, fight, uh, fight and flight response, and uh, make sure that you have enough energy, enough electricity to your brain so you can run, so you can make quick, short term decisions uh, and uh, survive. But if you keep it for a long time, it is too much voltage coming to your brain and the, the neurological system is tense all the time and it cannot um, order the cleaning process properly. You don't clean properly. You don't recover. If you have some kind of sickness you have to recover from, it's not gonna be happening quickly. And if uh, cleaning is uh, happening slower than accumulating of toxins, then this toxin is going to stay in the body and it's going to uh, give some kind of reaction. You'll have autoimmune reaction, you can, you can have a, um, skin rashes, eczema, psoriasis, then it will go in anti, uh, autoimmune disease like Lyme disease, not Lyme disease, lupus, lupus, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Usually people who have psoriasis, they also have rheumatoid arthritis later. And uh, all sorts of stuff can be start to go on wrong. That's, that just means cleaning process is um, not happening fast enough. And uh, so things which aggravate neurological system and also stop cleaning process uh, is, uh, apart from stress, is electrical pollution, because electricity goes into you and you can actually uh, like take it from the screen and you can see if you worked on a screen for several hours and then you go to sleep and you feel you can fall asleep you can fall asleep that's your neurological system being aggravated what you can do you can go for hot shower and then have a cold shower and then you will take extra electricity and you will go uh, sleep much more easier and this is what uh, parents do to kids Kids who cannot relax, they put them in the bath and then they go to sleep easier. Um, and uh, one important thing here is isolation. So we have two types of the psyche uh, condition. It's uh, introvert and extrovert. If you live in insulated uh, environments, so you mostly introvert, live inside your head, uh, this your body takes as a um, stressful situation. So in, in natural situation, uh, we are social creatures, we're supposed to be surrounded by people, this is safe. When you're on your own, your body goes into, um, uh, this is stressful, this is uh, dangerous, all your sensitivity go up, all your self-preservation signals go up, because if you go and break your leg in the forest on your own, who gonna help you? You cannot afford to do this. So what I find when I work with people, um, the one of the main important things uh, is to get them out of these isolated situations, uh, especially cancer patients. Get them into social situations, everyday social interactions, and they recover much better. They recover much quicker. Uh, and it's happening because of hormone called oxytocin. Oxytocin have calming effect on neurological system and it's it's a neurotransmitter so a lot of processes happening in the brain 
based on neurotransmitters, they run in between neurons and exchange uh, uh, information. So if not enough neurotransmitters, the other neurotransmitters is do dopamine, for example. <laughs> dopamine is the one which brings pleasure. If it's not enough of them, you're not going to be smart enough, you're not going to be uh, quick thinking enough, your intellectual capacity is going to be compromised, you're not going to perform, you're going to have higher stress hormones, it's not going to work out. So isolation is, is like, this is thing you have to eliminate from your life if you want to be healthy, just like any cooked food, you know, it's it, just like lack of sleep, it's maybe even more important. And then any kind of neurological interventions, um, they can also aggravate our neurological system like uh, psychedelic drugs, they open the neurological system and then it never comes back and uh, other things uh, people's created. Okay, uh, quickly to what happens when we cannot clean fast enough. So if it's excess fat, what happens? Usually your body tries to get it out um, through the skin. So it's a greasy skin, open pores, it could be acne, and then it's greasy scalp. And uh, many people experienced it on a cook diet who experienced it. And then when you go raw and low fat, you see like you don't have to wash your hairs as often. Your skin is not that greasy. You don't have as much acne. Um, from the other side, what happens inside you, if you are not able to get all this fat out, it gets accumulated in your arteries, and then you get atherosclerosis. And then what's happening further? Uh, when it happens, for example, on, on this artery here, which is uh, quite an important one, you see this uh, atherosclerotic plug. This is a saturated fat which comes from annual product. And uh, it's also trans fats. So it's fats which have been um, uh, modified by, uh, by humans in order to make them solid. So like all ma margarines and stuff, we want to make it solid so it, we can use it in recipes and it doesn't, you know. But the, what's happening, it's also solid inside you. So your body struggles, it's not water soluble. Your body struggles to get it out. And what happens, okay, this artery getting blocked and also the, the uh, walls of the artery could become very weak because of these plugs, because some of them could be quite uh, stiff. And then they put metal, they open, open your chest and put uh, metal um, reinforcement inside the artery, and uh, this is uh, called uh, stents. And some people have several of them. And then the other thing, what they do, okay, they um, get to your um, some other pe part of the body where they can get this uh, piece of artery. For example, it usually happens here on your um, your calves. Take piece of it and then stitch it here because here artery is blocked. And this is a very like uh, complex but common uh, operation called coronary bypass. And this is what is happening to many people. And heart disease is the leading cause of death in the Western world. So I don't know, if someone will tell you that, uh, you know, go fruitarian or grow food is extreme, I don't know, to me it seems this is extreme. That's way more extreme. Okay, autoimmune reactions. So when cleaning process is not happening properly, you're gonna have reactions on your skin or it will get accumulated and it can go into your joints or other tissues. The safest way how your body store unwanted stuff is put it in the fat tissue. And so lots of people who f have sufficient fat deposits, they have very nice skin. There is no, no reactions on the skin because everything is stored in fat. And then lots of skinny people who have problems with uh, toxic uh, load, they have psoriasis and all sorts of stuff. There is no, no space to, to safely 
keep it. But then, okay, um, about excess sugar, uh, what is happening, the most common is allergies, and uh, kids have it a lot, especially babies. Babies are supposed to live on the, on the breast milk for three to three and a half years, and uh, they're supposed to introduce uh, even like fruits quite slowly. And if it's happening too quick, they can get reactions. Also, if there is any toxins in this fruit, they're gonna have allergies. So when I was a little, I had allergies. And uh, when my parents got a piece of land and start to grow their own food, I never was allergic to it. And uh, that's because I was reacting not to the fruits, but to the chemicals which was on the fruit. Um, and uh, for, for fruitarians, this is me actually, and you see this like a little flaky skin here. This is happening when you eat too much fruit. When the fruit intake doesn't match your activity, and it could happen, and it could be aggravated in the hot environments. So this is just for you to be aware. If you start to see something like this on your face, this is just too much fruit intake. And it usually comes from lots of uh, tropical fruits like mangoes and uh, very sweet uh, juicy fruits, uh, watermelons pretty much never, never make it happen because the balance between sugar and water is right. But uh, yeah, if it's very sweet mangoes and you eat them for like weeks straight, this is what can happen to you. So just be aware of it. You just need to, you know, raise your level of activity and uh, drink more water. Then it will, you know, just dilute it, basically. Okay. Um, excess proteins, just very quickly. So if it's too much proteins, your kidneys have to get it out. And then kidney disease happening, kidney failures. When your kidney fail, fail, you go on dialysis. And this is for the rest of your life. This is also quite extreme. So please be aware of it. And uh, don't, don't, don't take too much protein in your diet. I, don't think, I think you're all safe now. Uh, the other thing with proteins, um, especially animal products, they create very acidic reaction in, in the body and then your body has to take some kind of uh, uh, something alkaline to neutralize this reaction. Usually it's calcium from your bones. So, um, how it's called, osteoporosis happening after a prolonged period of time on high milk diet, high animal protein diet. And there's a lot of research about it and, uh, and it's all scientifically proven. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, uh, the other thing with proteins, I, undigested proteins for our body is quite hard to consume. Uh, so especially milk protein, gluten, it's a plant protein, but it's still, if it's uh, uh, not broken down, it causes a lot of autoimmune reactions. Uh, nut protein, because it's also seed, so people have lots of, uh, people have allergies on nuts. And uh, fish and selfish uh, proteins, which if they're not broken down, if you have leaky gut, then you might have autoimmune problems related to it. And yeah, and this is long list of the things which can come out of it. And uh, type one diabetes, uh, this is like uh, for young kids, is usually due to uh, milk consumption, coarse milk consumption. Okay. <coughs> uh, when you accumulate too much toxins in some of the places of your body, uh, you can develop cancer and uh, after this, I will quickly go you through the cancer case. So basically, um, if there is a accumulation of toxin in this tissue, cells next to it can start to mutate because the environment is polluted. So the cells uh, start to multiply in their own way. And if your immune system doesn't find it quickly and, and uh, dismantle them, which it's supposed to do all the time, then it, they multiply more and more, and then it goes into a tumor. Uh, but uh, for most of people, uh, too many chemicals and toxins, you can see it on the skin, in the face. So it starts to be like there is all sorts of 
like a little fins and pimples and acne and uh, pigmentation and you can't take sun properly you can't sun like the tan is not not going you have like irritations and then you have like a little pigmentations and you can see it on the skin so if your skin is not ideal see where this toxicity come from and maybe you have to go through the cleaning okay very quickly about my uh, cancer case uh, with a woman with who we're going through uh, work right now but we started in November last year so this is how she uh, looked June last year so it's one year ago and uh, she was very kind to share these photos because uh, you understand this like a delicate part of the body and we're very grateful but this that's how the tumor uh, looked before the biopsy and then she went for biopsy what they do when they do biopsy they uh, stamp it with a needle and then take the piece out so they can examine it but what they did um, I don't know if it's down to you know quality of of the doctor or whatever but it's after this it spread a lot and it metastasized in the lungs and in the rib and so by October that's how it looked from this and they already put her on hormone therapy, so like they give her tamoxifen and they give her injection to stop her cycle, to put down estrogen, her uh, tumor is uh, estrogen sensitive. Um, so that's how it looked. It's uh, 8.5 centimeters big and it taken pretty much the whole breast. She's a small woman and, uh, and there is, it's metastasized. So, uh, People, uh, doctors said we can't operate it. Also, it affected these lymph nodes, so the, the tumor goes and there it connects to lymph nodes and it's all solid. And uh, so they said it's not operable and uh, we could give you a chemotherapy, but it wouldn't work in your case. So but we basically can't do anything for you. You stage four, you know, go home. And uh, and this is where we started with, with her uh, in November. She was, um, she was very bad in terms of uh, her mental state. She was very weak and she just, she, she couldn't uh, even like think about changing her diet. Like she just wanted to die basically. She, she felt okay, like the, I just got in this horrible situation and this is what's gonna happen. Also what contributed to it isolation she had no one uh, like who would like really deeply care for her and uh, she lived alone and then she did no physical activity she had a strained neurological system because she was isolated she was in constant anxiety and stress am i gonna die what to do and and uh, just inside her head all the time it's like a vicious cycle she, you can't get out and then hormonal imbalance she obviously had because it's a hormonal dependent and an incorrect diet which is high level of toxicity so uh, in little uh, women's like her like she pretty much had no fat reserves most of the fat is in the breast so if uh, something like this happens it usually happens in the breast because this is the place where the most fat re reserves are and this is where your body can store the toxins because fat is it's safe to put something in the fat. It's uh, it will keep it away from from your yeah. I'm finishing. Um, it will keep it away from your uh, uh, the most important organs. So what we uh, um, created the protocol with your um, every day with the people psychological work. So from November till mid January we did only psychological work. It was no question about diet. She wasn't ready. And we was um, talking a lot, like every other day on a Skype and trying to um, get into mentality Then everything is not that bad. And there is a hope and there is excitement in life, figure out what she really wants to do. And um, concentrate on joy and physical activity. So she started take dancing classes and do hiking trips in nice, beautiful places. And then uh, in January, we started raw diet and uh, we also started fasting till one o'clock every day 
Then we did colon cleanses, and uh, every day she drinks hot water, three to four liters a day to assist the cleaning process. And then enough sleep, because she wasn't getting enough sleep. And uh, then hyperthermia, this is the last uh, addition, like every day hot shower, every day going to sun or to sauna or sweat somewhere. Okay. Okay, so we'll skip. Okay, the progression. So this is situation in October, this big tumor. And then uh, in the middle of January, we started the diet protocol. And this is 5th uh, February. It's already reduced quite a bit. So what happens is start to dry out. The, the whole uh, tumor start to dry out. And then in March, um, the piece of tumor fell off. That's the piece. And it, it continued to dry out. And uh, so here the nipple is uh, becoming free from anything. So it's like more like natural looking. And then June by June, so it's one month ago, that's how it looks. It's basically just like a, like a scar tissue. So it's healing. And this is how it was. This is where we started. And what she eats, so she fasts till one o'clock, only hot water, and uh, green smoothies with some berries, whatever, like some fruit she puts, this is after one o'clock. And um, she grows her own wheat grass and puts it in the green smoothies. And in the evening, uh, like some more green juice and salads with some fruit. So for cancer patients, we have to restrict fruit uh, to a certain extent, not, not like uh, the most, the sweetest fruit and tropical fruit we restrict because it raises blood sugar too much and uh, cancer cells, they take like uh, 10 to 20 times more sugar than other. And uh, so we try to restrict that. So in, in May, um, this May, we went to Georgia and she went with us and we was hiking for two weeks we did uh, 380 kilometers hiking, every day hiking with a little backpack and some of it even running. And uh, we did it every day. We were swimming in the sea. We were eating beautiful <coughs> fruits. It's amazing country. It's amazing mountains. And uh, she went with us. She was fine. She was very strong. Now one question. You said the first meal was 1 o'clock. What time was the last meal? Uh, about seven o'clock, seven after eight, uh, she tries not to eat, but sometimes she still eats something, but uh, yeah. So like 18 hours past a day? Yes. Yeah, so very nice produce there, very beautiful fruits, it's amazing country, and this is her, and uh, yeah, she, she, she's really strong, she's enjoying her life now, there is still some work to do, we work in, but you know, she's gonna leave. She's not gonna die anymore. And uh, that's what, you know, sensible approach can do for you. And you don't, you, you understand, like she had no choice, no other choice. And, uh, and uh, I'm very glad that she was sensible enough to follow it. And yeah, this is her, she climbing trees, you see. She is always was quite skinny. Um, so, just couple things for you to remember. So this is her, and it, as you can see, like her cheeks are shining. This is my mom, she's uh, 68 years old, and even she has like quite a bit of wrinkled skin, but still, her face is shining. It means neurological system is working. This is, you have to have it. If you don't have it, it means you're not recovering. You know, like you can see, if you go for a run for 10 kilometers, you come back, your cheeks are shining. That's how you need to keep yourself most of the time. And uh, if your face like look pale, you know, like, like old people, it means cleaning process is not happening fast enough. You're going to, you know, uh, suffer at some point. <laughs> the other thing is your colon. So with <coughs> her, we did some colon cleanses and this is thing which I do with people on a regular basis because most of them have some kind of deposits there. So look at your, at your belly. If you just add the food and it was a lot, your belly will look like this, that's okay. But if it looks like this most of the time, it means you eat too much, you eat around the clock. 
this not supposed to be like this, or it means that you have sufficient intestine deposits and you have to clean it. Deep colonotherapy, very recommended, or you can do enemas at home if you want to know how to do them, come to me, I'll explain you how to do it quickly, how to do it pain-free and nice, and you will see in two weeks, you'll see your cheeks will start to shine and your belly becomes flat. And this is how it's supposed to be most of the time. And if it's not, please, uh, like you will see, you will have some other problems probably as well. You'll have some skin problems, you'll have some uh, pimples, or you'll have some autoimmune responses. So it's very, very important. If you run regularly, this happens naturally because you know you jump, it all moves down. But most of people don't don't run all the time. So yeah. Uh, yeah, this is it. Thank you very much for listening. So, uh, in I think in the end of this September, we're thinking to go to Georgia again to do some kind of trip like this. So, if you're interested, come to us and then we can see if you can come with us. This is something, you know, this is different to just being in one place and, you know, and having some kind of security. We're gonna be moving every day, stay in different places, hike mountains, see amazing things. But it, it's an adventure, so. Thank you.